All right, how's it going, y'all? Today we're gonna to be talking about 10 gig networking on a Synology NAS and basically what hardware you need to buy to get set up with 10 gig networking at home or your office. And it's a little bit confusing because instead of the regular just everything is a copper network cable like we've got here, there are two different really common standards for 10 gig networking. There's the standard RJ45 copper, but there's also SFP plus, which is actually either over fiber or in short distances over copper as well. And so because 10 gig actually has a lot of noise because it's just going so fast, 10 gig over fiber is a lot easier than it is over a regular copper cable because these just have to go so far. But the thing is, fiber, unless you're ready to handle it, is just going to be very complicated. All right, so first off, let's talk about what 10 gig networking is and why you would want it on your Synology NAS. So 10 gig networking is 10 times faster than one gig networking, which is your standard gigabit networking card. So if we're talking about file transfer rates, which are measured in megabytes per second, a one gig connection will get you up to 125 megabytes per second. That's because there's a difference between bits and bytes. So when you talk about a networking card, you measure it in bits per second. So a gigabit card, can do 128 megabytes per second. Then, if you need faster than that, which is actually quite slow, you need to go up to what's called a 10 gig card. There are also some other standards like two and a half gig and five gig, which are catching on now, and we hopefully will be seeing those soon. But for most people, it's up to 10 gig. And so for 10 gig, you should expect to get about one to 1.1 gigabytes of data per second, which has incredibly fast transfer rates. So to do this, you need both your computer and your Synology to have a 10 gig network card in there. So for Synology, you're actually limited to specific models. And so those are models that actually have a built-in PCIe card that you can use to add in later, or some of the really nice models have built-in 10 gig ports on them. And so you need to make sure that whatever Synology you're buying or have already bought has a PCIe slot in there that you can use. Then it's really easy, you just buy the card and there's a compatibility list on Synology and you slot it in and now your Synology has a 10 gig card in there. Now you need your computer or wherever you're gonna be accessing the files to also have 10 gig capability. If you're doing this over Wi-Fi, stop right now and you don't need a 10 gig upgrade, it's not gonna help you at all, so you can just stop there. Now if you're wired connection to your computer, you have pretty much two different options you can actually do a direct connection. That's where you actually hook up your computer directly into the Synology and create your own network like that. It is a bit more complicated and is not as plug and play as everything else, but it does save you from having to buy a 10 gig switch, which can be very expensive. This is actually not my 10 gig switch. My 10 gig switch is actually hard mounted to the wall and I could not get it off very easily. So I'm just using this as a replacement. But my favorite 10 gig switch, especially for just starting out, is a Netgear switch. And I'll leave a link to my video on it in the description below. But what it has is it has two 10 gig ports and the rest are standard gigabit ports. And so what that allows you to do is hook up your NAS to one of the ports and your computer to another one of those 10 gig ports. And now you just have such better transfer speeds, direct connection between the two while also every other device gets a one gig connection to the NAS, but they're not gonna be throttled, and your computer can also use that same connection to have internet and everything. And so that's by far the easiest setup if you wanna pay that money, and it really is just kind of plug and play. You need to get a 10 gig card for your computer, or something like this. This is a Thunderbolt 3 to 10 gig adapter. You can plug it into your computer, and now you can just plug in an RJ45 cable and get 10 gig speeds. Note, these things can get pretty warm and can actually overheat a little bit if you've got anything on them that's not letting the heat dissipate. There are actually ones that I'll leave a link to in the description below that actually have a fan that will work a lot better, but they are expensive, they're not cheap. And so that's where you've got the option. Do you want to spend the money to buy a 10 gig switch because you wanna have multiple devices connected and everything like that? Or do you just need a single device connected over 10 gig directly from the Synology to the computer and then your computer for browsing the internet will just use Wi-Fi? If you're doing that, you're doing what's called a direct connection between the two devices. And I'll leave a link on how to set that up in the description below. It is going to be a bit more complicated 
and you're just going to remember to use specific IP addresses when you want to go over 10 gig than if you're using any of the other devices. And I'll leave a link to that in the description below. And so really those are your options. Then the other thing you're going to see is you're going to see that cards either come in 10 gig SFP plus or 10 gig RJ45, sometimes called 10 G base T. If you don't have the equipment to handle SFP plus, it is going to be incredibly annoying to deal with. I would stay away from that and instead spend the extra money and go for the 10 gig RJ45 one. That is the standard card you use. That's the standard port and your regular ethernet cables will work with that. And so that is just going to be so much easier to set up if you don't have a lot of equipment already. And that's what most people should do. So when you're buying networking cables, you should buy a cat six or a cat six, a network cable. Cat six can do 10 gig speeds at a hundred feet, which is about as far as most people are going to do. Cat six, a is spec to do 10 gigabit at the full hundred meters, which is about 330 feet. And so those are your options. Now, technically you can get 10 gig speeds over cat five E. So a lot of people's houses are currently wired with cat five E. And if they're not really far runs that don't have a lot of interference, people have gotten 10 gig to work. You'll just end up with a lot more packet drops, but it can still be way faster than gigabit and you don't have to rewire your house. And that's all there really is to it. Now your computer is going to be able to talk to your NAS at such faster speeds. And so where this is really going to help you is if you're either video editing or if you're dragging and dropping huge files to your NAS, you're going to get much better throughput. I'll go ahead and leave Amazon affiliate links in the description, basically of all the different hardware for different setups you would need for basic 10 gig setups, because I've actually had a few consulting appointments where people bought just a bunch of random hardware because it's really confusing. The fact that there's different types of 10 gig interfaces makes it really complicated if you don't know what you're doing. But remember, if you just want to simplify everything, get 10 gig RJ45, 10 G base T, and it should work with just about everything. All right, well, that's going to be it for this overview. Go and leave any other tutorials you'd like to see me make in the comments below. And if you want to sponsor the channel, there's a link for that in the description. All right, have a good one. Bye.